Coming up on Mountain News at 6, a Wolf County School District employee is arrested after an incident at an elementary school. And lawmakers, health leaders, and some young people discuss vaping issues during an interim legislative panel in Frankfurt. And first alert weather days have been declared for Thursday and Friday, and we'll tell you why coming up in a few minutes. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. A Wolf County School District employee is charged with terroristic threatening. The employee was arrested yesterday on school grounds. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox tells us what we know about that arrest. Deputies were dispatched to Campton Elementary School after reports of an upset person inside the building. But there was an employee uh, at Campton Elementary who was upset over an incident that occurred over the weekend. Um, the SROs, Sheriff Banks, and the school administration team immediately went to the school. Norman Centers was charged with terroristic threatening and menacing. Banks says they found Centers in the hallway. He was not supervising children, but deputies made an alarming discovery. Um, we located uh, two weapons inside his vehicle that was on school grounds, um, a couple boxes of ammunition that was also inside of his vehicle. Um, he was then detained. Um, took to the sheriff's department and charges was immediately filed after that. The school was placed on lockdown as soon as the investigation began. We secured the building and secured his truck and everything to keep everybody safe. Bell says no students or staff were in immediate danger, but they wanted to go on lockdown out of caution. The superintendent says administrators have emergency plans for those types of situations. We have protocols in place. Uh, someone in the office will email each teacher the staff will know to get on their email. They can see what's going on, and that way they can comfort the students. Windows on school entrances and classroom doors also have covers to keep people from seeing inside. Officials say student safety is their first priority. In Wolf County, Channel Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Officials did not confirm what the alleged threats made by Norman centers were directed towards. Sinners was taken to the Three Forks Regional Jail. A Wayne County man is dead following a crash. The one vehicle crash happened on Kentucky 92 in the Coopersville area of Wayne County yesterday. Officials with the Sheriff's Office say 28-year-old Dakota Barrier lost control of the vehicle he was driving and hit a tree. Barrier was pronounced dead at the scene. A Pike County man is facing charges after he reportedly stabbed his ex-girlfriend's father. Dispatchers were called to a home on 289 Peach Orchard on Sunday. It started when the victim told police his daughter and Joshua Jones had been fighting the day before. When the victim told Jones to leave his home, he would not. That led to an altercation where the man was stabbed multiple times by Jones, including under his left eye. Jones was taken to the Pike County Detention Center. A Georgia man is facing charges after police in Laurel County executed a traffic checkpoint. The incident happened in the overnight hours on Monday when police came across Jacquez March. They say they smelled marijuana coming from the vehicle. After officers in a K-9 searched the vehicle, they found a clear bag with a white substance believed to be cocaine. March was arrested and taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. One Pike County coal operation is nearing an end after Alliance Resource Partners and its subsidiaries announced plans to lay off nearly 300 employees. WYMT's Buddy Forbes shares how one group is hoping to step in to help those impacted. Excel Mining is making plans to cease operations at its lower Johns Creek mining complex, sending notices to its employees as the company transitions into winding down production, leading local leaders and area organizations to discuss how to help ease the burden for at least 280 Eastern Kentucky workers. We received the warn notice um, we're just kind of evaluating that and we just want to make sure that we have all the resources available to the folks who, who need them to make sure that they're to help anyone who's affected transition to, to a new job. Alliance Resources, the parent company to Excel's MC Mining Operation, announced the issuing of warn notices last week, saying the decision was not made lightly, citing challenging geology, market conditions, weakness in coal demand, and delays in payment for coal as the deciding factors. You hate to hear this kind of news, um, 
And so sometimes people may not know what their next step is. We can help them bridge that gap. Eastern Kentucky Concentrated Employment Program Communications Director Chris Ritchie says the Kentucky Career Center Job Site Network is hoping to be proactive for the folks who are heading into the holidays with layoffs weighing on their shoulders, saying the connections and resources available through the organization's partnerships can provide new opportunities. Miners have skills that are applicable in other industries. Um, from you know truck driving to welders to things like that. Um, and we know that there are training programs out there and we like to be able to connect those folks with those, those resources. Richie says after layoffs of this magnitude, some workers choose to transition into a new field like advanced manufacturing, while others prefer to find work doing what they have always done. And EKSEP is there to help with either of those paths. And we have a business services division that works with just employers from across the region that can certainly include miners, different mining companies. Uh, so if they have that interest, we can definitely steer them there if those um, opportunities are available. For now, Alliance Resources says Excel's workforce will continue to work, with some crews mining from two production units to supply the coal that has already been contractually committed, and the other workers will focus on reclamation throughout the complex, leading up to the mine's permanent closure. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The news release from Alliance Resources did not provide a definitive timeline, but guidelines for the WARN notice require at least a 60-day heads up for workers. The case against a man accused of shooting his mother is moving forward. Joseph Fulton was due in court yesterday. Wayne County deputies say he confessed to shooting his mother and setting the house on fire. Her body was found burned in a home in the Mill Springs community earlier this month. Fulton is charged with murder, arson, and corpse abuse. Yesterday, a judge refused to set his bond, saying he was a risk to the public. His case was sent to a grand jury. Highs today were in the 50s and 60s, some places even in the upper 60s. The numbers for today played out like this. 68 in London, 64 in Somerset, as well as Hazard. Jackson made it to 65. Prestonsburg made it to 60. Pikeville, as well as Clintwood, only made it to 59 degrees. We're seeing some rain out there at the 6 o'clock hour, and temperatures right now are still in the 50s and 60s. We're at 59 in Hazard as well as Prestonsburg, 60 in Jackson, 62 Irvin, 63 in Somerset. Uh, Williamsburg's at 59, same story in Middlesbrough as well as Harlan. There's live pinpoint Doppler radar right now, and you can see the heavy rain pushing its way out of our uh, viewing area, and you can see it's kind of a quick mover. This is the past three hours, how it's just swung through eastern Kentucky, dropped a nice amount of rain across the area. We really need it. We're sitting below normal for the year still, above normal for the month. But the rain chances will continue as we go throughout the next several hours. They will be out of here by the overnight hours. We'll get a break in the morning hours of your Wednesday. Then rain chances pick up again as we go throughout uh, the afternoon and evening hours. You can see there on future view how the rain starts to pick up a little bit. By 2 o'clock, we'll see temperatures in the 50s and 60s. Now, with snow in the forecast Thursday and Friday, we have declared both of those days first alert weather days, and we'll dissect that coming up in the first alert forecast in a few minutes. Steve. All right, Eric, thanks. Kids are still getting their hands on harmful vaping and tobacco products. That's what lawmakers, health leaders, and even young people discussed in an interim legislative panel today. A law was passed last year to address some youth vaping issues, but lawmakers were told they do not go far enough. Senator Jimmy Higdon says he may file a bill to require licenses at retailers. He says House Bill 11 that dealt with youth vaping does not have consequences for offenders. A good tool to have is uh, have that hanging over your head that if you continue to break the law, you're going to lose your license. The Denton Group represents some vaping businesses, and a representative said House Bill 11 is already hurting some of them. The representative says she wants a delay in enforcement of the bill. Sports wagering has been legal in Kentucky now for a little more than a year, and it's been very successful. That was the message several with the state's horse racing industry told lawmakers in an interim legislative committee Tuesday. Jamie Eads is the president and CEO of the Kentucky Horse Racing and Gaming Corporation. She says sports wagering has exceeded expectations. The sponsor of the legislation says it resulted in more than double the tax revenue they estimated. 23 million was our projection that we worked off of when we passed House Bill 551. Um, 
to, to further take that down down the pike, 40.51 million based on those numbers go into the permanent pension fund. Representative Meredith also says they have been able to provide a lot more money to the problem gambling fund. 12 counties in Kentucky will be selected to review how smooth the voting process went on Election Day. Attorney General Russell Coleman will select those counties for the inquiries tomorrow inside the state capitol. After completing the independent investigations in each of the 12 counties, the Attorney General's office will present its findings to grand juries in the selected counties. The countdown is on for this year's Black Friday and Cyber Monday holiday deals, and with that, comes package deliveries. As you begin to receive more packages during this holiday season, it's important to remember there are some porch pirates out there. Officials with Hazard PD say to ask your neighbor to look out for your packages if you know they are coming. Another alternative is to send the packages directly to your job. But they remind shoppers there are also dangers when in-person shopping as well. Uh, as far as shopping and stuff goes, um, it's safer if a woman wears a crossbody and keeps her wallet or purse on in her in front pocket or inside of her coat pocket. Uh, try to avoid um, paying with large amounts of cash. Holberg says if you notice a package marked delivered as is missing, make sure to contact the seller and the police as soon as possible. All right, we had the rain push through today, but now we're talking snow, and because of that, Thursday and Friday are declared first alert weather days. Details in a few minutes. Plus, one Harlan County native is working to give back to the community. We'll tell you how.